Hello and welcome to the show, I am your host Neil Taylor. Now this time on the show I am trying something a little bit different. This idea was given to me by Mr. Chris O'Regan from the Sausage Factory podcast. Now I do recommend you go and check that out, I'll put a link in the description down below. And he suggested instead of taking a look at a company or a game, I take a look at a person. I thought that was an absolutely fantastic idea because when it comes to games there's a lot about companies and games we can talk about but there's a lot of people we can talk about a lot of influential people that we can talk about and i would like to see how a video on a particular individual does for today's episode i'm going to take a look at the history and career of mike singleton mike singleton was a video game designer who wrote various well-regarded titles for the zx spectrum during the 1980s his titles include the lords of midnight doom dark's revenge dark specter war in middle earth and midwinter before developing video games, Singleton was an English teacher in the Ellesmere port of Cheshire. Singleton originally started programming in the late 1970s and wrote Computer Race, a horse racing game he designed for a betting shop on the Commodore Pet. Moving on from this, he began work on arcade games for the Pet, working with Petsoft where he wrote Space Ace entirely on 6502 machine code. The game broke sales records of the day by selling 300 copies. Singleton's association with Petsoft turned out to be short-lived, as Petsoft, who had been due to enter a contract with Sinclair Research in Cambridge to write software for the new ZX80, lost out on the deal to Sin. Singleton contacted British inventor and entrepreneur Clive Sinclair and was asked to send his games along. He was then asked to visit the site in Cambridge and invited to work on software for their brand new ZX81 Micro. Singleton used this as a platform for his Games Pack 1 project. Games Pack 1 was a series of games, each fitting just one kilobyte of memory. It was one of the first commercial software programs written for the ZX81 and something of a runaway success, selling a massive 90,000 copies, earning Singleton £6,000 for his efforts, having just taken him two weeks over the Christmas holidays to complete. Whilst the arcade game writing business was making him a living, Singleton, who, re who retired from teaching completely in 1982 to become a full-time freelance games designer, was an old-school wargamer at heart, hooked from an early age on war board games and play-by-mail strategy games, working for a time on Seventh Empire, a PBM game he put together for Computer and Video Games magazine, which eventually led to Beyond Software, where Computer and Video Games editor Terry Pratt moved to Run Beyond. In March 1984, Singleton's spy-themed board game, Treachery, which had its complicated game logic controlled by a computer program, was featured in computer and video games with a type-in list for Spectrum, together with a keyboard overlay, a common feature of his games, center spread boards, and a set of counters. The game was so popular among the readers that the editor asked for the conversions for the Commodore 64 and the BBC Micro to be produced, and each of them featured in computer and video games' 1985 yearbook. It was from beyond that Singleton, who remained freelanced, was by September 1983 being pressed for more programs and having progressed to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. He wrote what was widely regarded as some of the best strategy adventure games to ever be seen on those Hurley home microcomputers. The Midnight series, Lords of Midnight, released in 1984, and Doom Dark's Revenge, which were originally intended to form a trilogy, the final of which would have been Eye of the Moon, never came about. Each of the two games played out on a scale never before seen back in the mid 80s, at a time when many games were, were boasting 50 or even 100 locations, Lords of Midnight's groundbreaking gameplay featured over 4,000 locations, and Doom Dog's Revenge 6,000 plus well in excess of 100 player controlled characters. Had Eye of the Moon come into fruition, it would have had around 24,000 locations in its map, featuring 12 distinct regions, each with a sub-quest completely separate from the main objective of the game. Moving on from the Midnight series, Singleton worked on several games of a more arcade-like nature, the first of which was Throne of Fire, a side-view live-action game featuring multiplayer options, where each player used the same computer to explore simultaneously, each trying to complete a set of objectives which led to the overall completion of the game. Dark Spectre was released later the same year, was also in essence a, a sideway viewed live action game, but returned to a more adventure feel. With a long drawn out challenge awaiting the player who would need to build up their forces to consolidate their position before seizing and the opportunity to actually complete the game. Two years later, War in Middle Earth, while essentially an adventure game on a similar scale to the Midnight series, represented a switch from the adventure to an action philosophy requiring the player to interact with characters under their control directly, moving them individually in each of the battles, giving the game a much more arcade adventure feel. In the late 1980s, Singleton moved on to 16-bit machines that were making an appearance and worked on the classic Midwinter trilogy, also producing another work in the Lords of Midnight series in 1995, Lords of Midnight, The Citadel. 
In the 21st century, Singleton continued to work in game design, making him one of the few developers to have made the transition to more modern consoles from the early days of home computing. Singleton worked for Midas Interactive and LucasArts on several games for the Xbox and PlayStation consoles, such as the action games Hypersonic Extreme, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Singleton worked on strategy games Wrath Unleashed, with his latest production being Gauntlet Seven Sorrows, a continuation of the 80s arcade classic Gauntlet. He also worked on Race Driver Grid, a racing game developed by Codemasters. At the time of his death, Singleton was working on an iPhone port of Lords of Midnight. That was the history or career, I suppose you want to call it, of Mr. Mike Singleton, a fantastic developer who started way, way, way back in the day and pushed right through, like I said, on Wikipedia, his last game listed is race driver grid so he was around for quite a long time that was 2008 a big thank you to chris o'regan who gave me the idea of trying out to do a person instead of a company or a video game i don't know whether i should still keep it as the history or it technically it's a biography kind of but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching now down in the comments let me know would you like me to cover more people as well as companies and games and such because I found this quite interesting looking into someone I personally didn't know about but finding out their history and how involved they were with the game scene as a whole I, I kind of enjoyed that so hopefully you did too so let me down let me know down in the comments down below do you want me to do more of these because I'm quite happy to do more give this video a like if you liked it give this video a dislike if you disliked it and remember as well please subscribe to the channel as well every little helps thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time